It's been a long time. I'm happy to be home. Thank you, thank you. Okay, choir. Mm. That was sweet. That was good. That was juicy. But there's one song you forgot in the medley. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that. fragrance after the rain oh Jesus 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 let all heavens and earth proclaim But there's something about that name. Oh, yes, it is. Amen. There's just something about that name. There's just something. Hallelujah. There's something about that name. Woo! Demons, demons tremble at the name of Jesus. I think sometimes we don't realize how much we're packing. Yeah? We're more powerful than we know. Because of Jesus. Not because of ourselves. And if we knew who walked with us and talked with us who has our back we wouldn't feel so challenged by the things that come our way because we know we've already won amen amen you may be seated Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary for you would you let that be your prayer this morning Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary even as you rebuild this house Pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. As I pulled up to the building, I heard that song in my spirit. And I said, okay, Lord, what do you wanna to say to your people? And I'm gonna just tell you, <laughs> I had my message prepared for this morning yesterday. Then I went to bed and the Lord said, get up. <laughs> I said, oh, I hate it when you do that, Lord. Get up and write this down. So I said, okay. So. You all pray for me because this is fresh out the oven. So I don't know how it's going to land, but it's for you. Amen. 
Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I know that you're in a new building. I, I think I've been in every single building you've ever had, starting at the Oriental Hotel. That's, that's how way back I go with Waterbrook. I'm seriously, and, and so I'm seeing you move, 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 and I said, these people are like the Israelites on their way to the promised land. <laughs> but God is taking you somewhere, and that's what you need to know. Don't get discouraged by upheaval, having to move. Every time that you move, God is moving you closer to the mark that he preordained for you before the beginning of time. And so we just gleefully and willfully follow with expectation of something even greater when we land, amen? And so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about building because I think sometimes when we move, we're like, oh, we're moving again, you know, or whatever. We get tired, we get exhausted, and kind of like it takes the fire out of you, you know, but moving is a good thing because God is always moving. He's never stagnant. He never stays still. He's always moving forward. He's into doing a new thing. I mean, God gets so excited about the new thing because he knows what it is. You don't know what it is. That's the part that creates upheaval for us. But God is moving you to another level. Amen? Say another level. Well, you know, there's this little story in the Bible in Genesis 11. And it says, now, when I read the Bible... For those of you who know me, you know I pick every little thing apart. I love the word. I love chewing on it. I love breaking it down. I love unpacking it. And so I really take my time. I don't skim over any line because every line is, is packed with something. Amen? And you'll miss it if you read too fast. Say, don't read too fast. It says, then the people said, come, let's build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches into the sky. This will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. But the Lord came down to look at the city and the tower the people were building and, and said, look, you know, God counsels with himself. I love that about him. He doesn't need any of our opinions. Amen. When people say, oh, you don't have enough faith. I said, God doesn't need your faith to get something done. He created an entire world before we showed up to agree with him. Amen? The faith is for us. The faith is the catalyst for our obedience because we believe that God will meet us on the other side of our obedience. That's why faith is needed. Amen? That's why it says, uh, without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's impossible to obey without faith. Amen? That's what pleases God. What does he desire more than sacrifice? obedience amen so that's what pleases god okay we've got that in context right so the lord comes down to look at the city and counsels with himself jesus and the holy ghost because jesus was there before you know and he says look the people are united and they all speak the same language after this nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them the power of unity come let's go down and confuse the people with different languages. Then they won't be able to understand one another. And in that way, the Lord scattered them all over the world and they stopped building the city. That is why the city was called Babel because that is where the Lord confused the people with different language. And in this way, he scattered them all over the world. Now, even though that sounds bad, it was for a good reason as well. But what I want us to take note of is who was building the city and why? It says, they said, let's come, let's build a great city for ourselves. Keyword, ourselves. With a tower that reaches into the sky that will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. Well, we know they got scattered all over the world, right? Because man makes plans, but God's will prevails. Amen. Now, he did the scattering to scatter the kingdom, to enlarge the kingdom. But however, the wrong motivation was in place for their building. And it wasn't in agreement with why God has us build. And so I want to take a look at that today because selfish motives will always lead to confusion and division. Amen? So I, I wanted us to think about this, not just in the sense of this building, but yourself, because you literally are a sanctuary 
individual sanctuaries that when we come together into the main sanctuary the Holy Ghost presence is made full amen because we all bring a portion of the Spirit of God into the house and that's when we have an explosion that's when we sense a move of God that's when his presence feels palpable to us because we have congregated all these individual sanctuaries harboring the power of the Holy Spirit coming together to cause an explosion in our midst when we gather in his name amen so who is supposed to be building the house that is the question the word of God says except the Lord build the house those who labor labor in vain now you know we're all very powerful people and I love my Nigerian people just I know you, you hear the accent so for those of you who don't know me you think I'm American I'm not American I'm Michelle Ayodele McKinney Hammond. <laughs> I'm Ghanaian and, and Bajan, actually. My mother's from Barbados. My father is Ghanaian. I was born in London, so I had to get my green card before Donald Trump got to. Uh... But the essence of this is that God says he has to build the house. Now, I don't know about you, but I can make some plans for my life. Anybody out there? I mean, I can come up with some schemes and some dreams that sound pretty fantastic. I can have a whole, you know, list of what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it, when I'm going to do it, who I'm going to do it with. And then God will sit and look and say, uh-huh, uh-huh. <sighs> Scatter your plans, right? Man makes plans. The world says man makes plans and God laughs. No. Man makes plans, his will prevails. That's what the word says. So we can save ourselves a lot of time and drama and trauma by tapping into him first and saying, God, what do you have in mind? Before I even start setting up plans that you're going to dismantle because it's not in alignment with your will, your purpose, and your plan for the kingdom or for me, what do you have in mind? Let me, let me hear from you. Saves a lot of time and pressure, I'm telling you. If he doesn't build the house... If he doesn't build your life individually or corporately, you labor in vain. And so I want you today to just become very cognizant of the fact that we've got to grow more sensitive than ever to the voice of God in this hour, in this season, at this time. Because God is moving in very unusual ways. Tomorrow is not promised. We've learned this. So what does God have for me for today? And let me be sensitive to his voice, that I don't move to the left or to the right without his voice directing me. He says, you will hear a voice saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. And as we press into his presence and hear his voice and practice hearing his voice so that you fine tune your hearing, you'll be amazed at where God takes you, what he builds in your life. What are you building? They said, let's build a tower that will make us famous. They had, they had a whole motive going for why they wanted to do what they wanted to do with their lives, with their worship, with their focus. What are you building? If it's not God's house, and when I say that, again, I'm not talking about just the building. I'm talking about your building, your personal building. What are you building? It says that we are fellow workmen working for God. You are God's garden and vineyard and field under cultivation. You are God's building. 1 Corinthians 3, 9. Have you thought about yourself as a sanctuary? Have you thought about yourself as God's building? Do you know what you carry inside of yourself? That literally when you walk in the door, the atmosphere should change because you are the house of God. Entering an atmosphere, when you enter into a place of darkness, the light comes on. The atmosphere changes. People stop cursing. They don't even know why. Because they sense what you're carrying. Have you ever met someone and they looked at you so intensely and they just had a, like a, a strange reaction to you? Is, is their spirit recognizing the spirit in you? Remember when Jesus went to the place where the guy was possessed with all of the legion. 
Remember that story? How many of you reading your Bibles? Okay. There's a place where Jesus went. And this man came out of the cave. And he was demon possessed. And the demons started screaming the minute they saw Jesus. They said, what do we have to do with you? It's not our time yet. Jesus hadn't said anything. He just showed up. Now, it says that we carry Jesus the same way. Amen? And they asked for permission to go someplace else. It's not our time yet. Can we go to the pigs? He said, okay. So they went into the pigs and they ran down the, the mountain and ran into the lake and drowned. Amen? Why do we spend all this time? Hama, hama, hama. Yelling at the, mount, uh, at the moon, shouting and screaming at the stars for what? If you know what you carry, when you enter the room, demons flee. They say, what have I to do with you? They know they have nothing to do with you because Christ and demons don't connect. When we become aware of what we carry, the atmosphere around us changes. People respond to us differently and demons have to flee. You are the house of God. You are God's building. Now, I don't want you to feel like I'm not saying you shouldn't come to church. Let me get that out of your mind right now. COVID taught us to seek God for ourselves. We couldn't gather together. And I believe it was a season where he was trying to teach you that you are his building. That he will meet you at your house. That he will meet you wherever you are. And you will get to know him one-on-one -on -one without the filter of a pastor or other people. Even though we were watching online, you had to learn to seek God for yourself. But there's a different purpose for this building. They encouraged you to come to a program. I'm also encouraging you to come because the Bible says with all you're getting, get an understanding. Okay, everything is not spiritual. We are spiritual beings having a natural experience. Therefore, we need to know how to maneuver in the natural world, amen? And so we gain wisdom from one another, from those who've been successful in an area where you want to be successful. You come and you'll hear things that might not be in your Bible. The Bible will back up what they say because the principles are the same, but perhaps they haven't been enlarged to you as you've read the word yourself. And so we, we use these vessels to learn more about what we need to know about in order to function in the earth realm victoriously, which then further glorifies God. Because when your life looks good, it makes God look good to somebody and somebody else will want what you've got amen you are the bible that no one will read remember that that's why we're called living epistles and so your life now becomes the bible that someone reads and says i want that god i want the god they have because they see the victory in your life regardless of what happens we're not exempt from problems but we handle them differently because we know whose we are and we know what we carry amen and so we are buildings of the Lord. And when we come into the sanctuary together, there's strength in numbers. That's why we don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. But God still wants a one-on-one -on -one clear path to you. Right? You cannot put everything on pastor. You cannot. He cannot unravel what you messed up all week in one hour on Sunday. He cannot. He's here to give you corporate instruction. What God is saying for the corporate body, but God also has a personal word for you that you need to tap into, amen? An individual word because your life is not her life. Her life is not your life, amen? Different circumstances. So he can't give a blanket word for everybody. He's got an individual instruction for your life. Why are you building your building? Why are you building your life? Do you want to be famous? Some of us want to be famous. You can go ahead and say, yeah, I do. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you a funny story. I'm in Lagos because I'm here to do a movie. So this is my first Nigerian film I'm in. So before I left, um, Shafi Bello, um, actually recommended me for the part. Such a nice woman. So they said, oh, we can't afford her, blah, blah. I said, oh, I'll come because I, I just want to, you know, come to Nigeria. So, okay, fine. So when, before I came, God spoke to me and he said, now they're just going to give you some little part. But don't worry, I got you. It's going to be more than that. 
okay, fine. So I get here. I don't have any script. They say, oh, we'll just give it to you when you get to set, you know. I said, okay, fine. So I get there. So they, they come and they bring the line. I said, These are, this is your, your line. It was one word. Okay. <laughs> I looked at it and I laughed. I said, okay. <laughs> I don't have to memorize that. Fine. I didn't say anything else. About an hour later, they came back and said, oh, we, we've changed your part. Now I became the main person in the scene with more lines. They just sent me a message last night. We need you back on set on Tuesday for another scene. And can you stay to do one on Friday? I said, see, that's how my God rolls. I don't know about your God, but that's how my God rolls. No, baby, I did not fly you from Ghana to just say, okay. But I'm trying to get you somewhere. Do you see where I'm taking you? As a building of God, knowing what you carry, knowing whose you are, there's an expectation you can have above the norm. Amen? You never have to, have to settle for less, but walk in humility. See, I didn't get upset about the okay line. I didn't say anything. I just said, oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't say, do you know who I am? I'm a world famous author. I'm an Emmy Award winner. You have to give me, and I didn't go there. I didn't even think it actually. I just said, okay. I was just happy to just be there. <laughs> I was grateful. And when we walk in gratitude, God can blow on that and blow it up for you, amen? So why are you building what you're building. They said, oh, well, let's build this tower so it'll make us famous and we can stay together as a clique. And God said, no, 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 no. Why are you building what you're building? Think about your life. Think about your vision for your life. Think about your goals and your dreams. Why do you want what you want? Is it to glorify God or to glorify yourself? The wrong motive will get God's attention, but not in a good way. Then what are you building on? What is your foundation? You know, Jesus asked Peter a question one day. Who do men say I am? They said, oh, some say you're Elijah, some say you're this person. Said, but who do you say I am? Jesus wants us to have a full understanding of who he is for ourselves, not what other people say about him. Everybody is going to have a different revelation of who Christ is according to their need, according to their background, according to their experiences, according to what they've been taught, what they've seen or heard or for themselves, amen? Your experience is gonna be different from theirs. I can say I know Jesus as a savior because he saved me at the lowest point in my life. I can say I know Jesus as a healer because he's healed my body. I got hit by a car. I was in bed for a year and a half. I had to have three surgeries. I had to learn how to walk again. I know Jesus as a healer. No one can take that from me. I know God in so many different ways. I know him as a counselor. I know him as a brother who sticks closer than any other. I know him as a sugar daddy. Oh, yes. He provides all of my needs. Even the things I don't need, sometimes the things I just want, he surprises me with them. So I don't have to depend on some guy to give me something. Everything I've gotten, Jesus has blessed me with it through other people. Amen. I haven't had to do something wrong to get what I want, is my point. Amen. Because the world is, 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 is just rocking us back and forth, making us think we have to do all kinds of things to get all kinds of things. No, 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 no. Not the children of God. You are the house of God. You carry yourself differently. You look differently. You act differently. You talk differently. You think differently. You have a different expectation out of life because you know who you are and whose you are. Peter said, well, you're the son of God. He says, heaven has revealed that to you. And on this rock, I will build my church. It is on the revelation of who Christ is that we are built our individual sanctuary, and the house of God, the main building. Amen? It is on this revelation, that is the foundation. That is why we are here. Jesus said, why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? I will show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and then follows it. 
It's like a person building a house who digs deep and lays the foundation on solid rock. Wow. Did you know that your obedience is a foundation? Your obedience to the word of God is a sure foundation. It is the thing that you're going to build the rest of your life on. Amen? It says that uh, when the flood waters rise and break against that house, it stands firm because it's well built. But anyone who hears and doesn't obey is like a person who builds a house right on the ground without a foundation. When the flood sweep down against that house, it will collapse into a heap of ruins. People, life happens. Death happens. Trauma happens. Drama happens. What are you building your house on? I remember I, I had a, for a moment, my music ministry had a church in, in Ghana. And we were in a warehouse. And they had built the wall halfway up. And so every Sunday, we would have to completely clean the place and, and dust everything because there was a factory next door and their dust would come over into our space. So someone gave us some money and we were able to build all the way up to the ceiling to cut that off. But one Sunday we came and the entire part that had already been built underneath had collapsed because the foundation hadn't been put in properly. So when the weight of the rest of the building came, it collapsed the bottom. And that's what happens to us. If our foundation is not sure, if we're not rooted and grounded in the word, if we're not rooted and grounded in obedience, when life happens, when we get blindsided by tragedy, disappointment, and brokenness, our foundation collapses because it was never put in place in the first place. You have to know that you know that you know who your God is. You have to know what he's capable of. You have to know his agenda concerning you. You have to be confident of his love for you. You've got to have a confidence that all things work together for the good for those who love the Lord. So that no matter what happens, because I can tell you, I have been through some things, okay? I've had a boyfriend shot and killed. I've been hit by a car. I've lost my house. I mean, I have been through a, a, a lot of things. But my faith in God has never been shaken. Every time something happens that seems like a setback, I get excited. And my friends think I'm weird. They go, aren't you upset? I'm like, I'm excited. Because if this is this bad, I can't wait to see what's on the other side. It's going to be doubly good. Why? Because I know my God. And I know he has a track record. Does God have a track record with you? I mean, can you think about some times when you thought you'd never make it? And when you got to the other side of that trial, it was even better than it was before. And you had to raise your hands and say, thank you. You had that aha moment because you finally got to see what God was up to. But it felt terrible and uncomfortable at the time. But when you got to the other side, you said, thank you, God. That's God's track record. And when that is happening in your life, that's the sure foundation. Amen? That keeps you, that causes you not to crumble, not to give in, not to cast off your confidence and give up on God because, oh, what is this? It's just a moment. This too shall pass. And all things work to the good for those who love the Lord. Who are you building for? Ultimately, that is the question. We brought nothing into this world, we'll take nothing out. And all that we do will be tested in the fire before God. And only the things done for Christ will last. Now, you might say, well, that's kind of boring. Well, I don't feel like I'm called to ministry. No, 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 every moment of your life is ministry. Every moment of your life, you get to express something for God. It's in your relationships, and it's in the people that you touch. I just left uh, TPH, and uh, there was a young lady there, and a friend of mine was with me, and she said something very interesting. She said, oh, I know that young lady. She's so nice. You know what? I believe she's really saved. She's an example of what a saved person is really like. And I thought, wow, I hope somebody's saying that about me. You never know who's watching. And everything that you do, is for Christ. Every response, every reaction, 
is for Christ. How you respond and react in any given moment, someone is watching and they're waiting to see a real Christian. They're waiting to see someone who's truly godly. They're waiting to see someone respond differently from how the world responds so that they can see that it actually can happen. Those are the things that we do for Christ being living epistles on a daily basis. There's a saying that says, um, share Christ with everyone all the time, but only use words when necessary. Let me say that again. Share Christ with everyone all the time, but only use words when necessary. What is it saying? Your life is sharing Christ. Amen. So as you build your house, adorn it with holiness, adorn it with sanctification, adorn it with good works, adorn it with love, adorn it with peace, adorn it with grace, adorn it with mercy. Let these be the things that decorate your personal sanctuary. He says, he, God was talking about uh, when uh, Solomon was going to build the house and he said, he is the one who will build a house, a temple for my name. So we build for his sake, his name's sake. He will lead us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He says, and I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house and he will walk before mine anointed forever. This is the... This is the declaration that God makes over all of us, that we will be faithful priests in the house of the Lord and that we will do according to what is on his heart and what is on his mind. So let's count the cost. For which of you intending to build a house or a tower sits, doesn't sit down first and count the cost so that you can finish it? You know, it talks about there being a great falling away in the end times. And it's because no one makes a realistic counting of the cost of what it costs to know God. There's a cost for sanctification. There's a cost. Yes, salvation is free, but it's going to cost you everything. It's even going to cost you the wrong expectations of God. Because there's this myth in Christendom that if we know God, we escape trouble. No, 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 my friends. We just respond differently. Trouble hits everybody. It rains on the just and the unjust. But we respond differently because we're covered by the blood. That's our umbrella. And so we walk with assurity. We don't, we don't, we're not afraid of the rain because we know it will come. So we count the cost. We count the cost that everybody's not going to like us because of what we believe and, and our response to things. And, I, you know, I remember when I first got saved, I worked at an ad agency, largest black ad, ad agency in the country. <clears throat> and it was Party Capital USA. And I was the first one at the party before I got saved. I'm just going to tell you. But once I got saved, I flipped. And they were like, what's wrong with you? I said, oh, no, I don't do that anymore. Oh, no, I'm not going over there anymore. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, I don't smoke cigarettes anymore. I don't do, you know, I just, I just flipped all the way. I went, I went to John the Baptist's extreme. Repent! I was a voice crying in the darkness <laughs> at the ad agency. Everybody was getting high, partying, and doing whatever. And I was like, repent, you're going to hell. You, you're living together. Get out of that house. Get married. You're fornicating. Oh, I went, I went all the way there. And for a minute, they were all running from me. But you know, all those people that I picked on are now all in ministry, all saved. Because <laughs> I wouldn't lower my standard for them. I raised the standard and they, you know, uh, there's a, there's a, I don't know if you ever heard of this, Bill Gothard's Youth in Basic Youth in Institute. It was a, a training platform and it was the, one of the best things that ever happened to me when I first came to the Lord because it gave me my foundation in the word. But he said something very interesting. He said, life is like a triangle. You're over here and you're walking towards God. He says, and other people come along and sometimes when they see where you're going, they turn around and they go back but eventually they will join you in walking towards God. And I never forgot that. 
And so some people, they didn't want to deal with me anymore. They run out the building, didn't want to have lunch with me because I was always talking about Jesus. But slowly, one by one, they'd come to my office and ask for prayer. They'd come to my office and ask for wisdom. And eventually, they all got saved. One even went to Princeton Seminary. It got that deep for her. But they're all in ministry now. And that Bible study that I started way back then is still going on at that company. So you see, we're individual sanctuaries. So when you leave this building, take it with you. Don't drop it at the door. Remember who you are, whose you are, what your mission is, what your foundation is. And the reason that you're building your life is for the glory of God. Amen. Amen and amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you that you trust us with the building. And even as this place is being rebuilt, I pray that it will be enlarged far beyond their expectations. Not because of the building itself, but because of the buildings inside of the building. Oh God, make us living sanctuaries for your glory. Let us glorify you in thought, word, and deed. Let the glory of God rest on us individually as we leave this place. Let others sense something different about us that draws them to your light. And we give you all the honor and all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. You're right. 